Hello and welcome to Curiosity Gameplay with Rebel Weasel. It's time for Curiosity Gameplay with Rebel Weasel. Today is going to be a very quiet, calm, relaxed day. I'm going to be finishing up my lighthouse design. But first, let's go ahead and review everything that's been done so far in the last, since last Thursday. I wanted to say last week, but it hasn't actually been a full week, has it? That's good, though. I like it. I miss you. So, getting back to our stream. We have some animals set up for mating out here in the downstairs area. I have a couple of saber-toothed cats, a couple of pteranodons, and a couple of megaloceruses over there in the corner. They're not really doing anything, you know, they're not, they're not extra extraordinary stellar stats, but I'd like to get the best I can from them because they're utility animals. I'd like to have these elk type animals outside guarding against eagles, and I'd like to have the pteranodons um, for having emergency flyers available on every map stored away. I have dimorphodons here, which are excellent shoulder pets for having in the cave system. And then we have, um, well, the saber tooths are my first choice in basic combat pet. These two raptors that are starting over here, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, are going to be sent over to one of the other maps to help guard me and give me some companionship while I work on building a base on the other map. Let's update ourselves on how our kibble herd is going. Starting with the extra small eggs, my dodo population has not changed yet, but what I have done is I've bred them and collected a whole bunch of dodo eggs so that when I have a proper stable with a good amount of room where I can have many animals out and I'm collecting enough food to keep them all supplied really well, I have the ability to hatch a whole bunch more dodos to increase the, the herd the herds. I'll also be doing the same with moss chops and actually I don't have as many moss chop eggs and one of the reasons why is because I already have uh, 15 or 20 moss chops out although I may go ahead and start them breeding again anyway. For small eggs we only have a set of over raptors. We have five of them set up in cages up here. One of the things that I still need to do that's on my list of to-do list is to go out and tame a whole bunch of Pagomastixes, which also provide small eggs. A Pagomastix is helpful because it's a, a herbivore rather than a carnivore, easier to kept fed since I don't have to constantly hunt for meat. Especially not having any hunting animals yet, running outside is actually a great deal more dangerous in my area than it would be anywhere else on the island map simply because the place that I'm in generates a lot of those Dadons, which are the warthog type looking animals. And those particular animals are really dangerous, really, really dangerous. One of the hardest hitting and hardest to kill animals out there. We have one, two, three, four, five farmers set up and each one is full of 300 fertilizer each, which means that I am prepared to start a garden on five more maps out of the nine that are available. Well, eight if you don't count the island itself. I've been able to reduce my thatch, uh, my compost bins from 10 down to four, simply because it's generating them quickly enough to where I don't need to have a big row of them. And my honey hives are doing really well. As you can see, they generated at least, uh, what, uh, 12 stacks of honey, 12 times five. That's uh, 66,000 units of honey. So the honey production is going very well for me. I've separated out my feeding troughs between ones for snails only, ones for herbivores, and ones for carnivores because some of my animals are omnivores. And if given the choice, they will eat the meat first. And I want to force them to only eat out of the veg out of the veggie saurus to uh, storage bin. For our regular size eggs, we have our turtles, which are our carbonemuses. The uh, carbonemuses, I only have one set of five currently, just for space reasons, because they are 
probably currently the biggest animal that I have out of my egg laying herds. Upstairs is where I've managed to squeeze my moss chops. I have one set in the back, two sets in the front, three sets in the back, and four sets off to the side. So that's four times five is 20. I have 20 moss chops out laying eggs. These are large sized eggs, which is for superior kibble. I'm getting a really good production out of it, which is good because I'm relying more on superior kibble for taming right now than I am for other kibble. And here is my snail connection creating uh, Akatina paste, which substitutes for cementing paste. They're doing very well. So far, I have not actually found myself running out of Akatina paste at the pace that I'm using it, but I do want to increase the herd up to full 20 later down the line when I have better storage for it. Let's go ahead and review what's going on outside. I have a few combat animals out now that are here as house guards. I've set them to a group called house guard and they're here in case anything actually happens to get inside my fencing. I did indeed have a breakthrough. I had an allosaur that managed to walk directly over the fence right in front of me there. It's set pretty low in the water and he just stepped right over it. Also there's a giga nearby. Oh there's a rex right across the way. Let's have a look at it. having a hard time getting its level. It must be behind something. A 196, that's a very good level. I wish I had the setup and the wherewithal the tamement, but unfortunately I don't. Even through knockout taming, I don't have enough darts. And with immersive taming, I don't have the materials that are necessary. This gigantic blue dome that you see overhead is that I've set my feeding trough to show its range. I wanted to see if the location of my feeding trough was about right for the size of the base that I want to build, and it actually is. I did want to move it a little bit further inland, um, not too much, only a couple feet, which is going to be missing a good deal of the deep part of the ocean, so that's a little bit of a concern, because I do plan to build opposite the shore of this, uh, of this river as well. That's where my castle will be located. So it's actually exactly where I want it to be. Um, really exactly where I want it to be. And my next building project will be what I call a utility tower. The utility tower uh, will house my power generator as well as feeding troughs, nannies, gardeners, farmers, um, and things like that so that they're all centralized in the exact same place so that their ranges are matched up and that whatever's working is working correctly. There's a pair of Rexes. There's a level 35 along with the other one. All of my combat animals are fairly disposable. They're leftover cast-offs from my breeding program. I have two Dimorphodons, three saber-toothed tigers, and one uh, Megaloceros. And I guess the big gigantic thing in the background here is my lighthouse. As you can see, I've completed it all the way up to the top portion of the tower. Let's go ahead and have a sit down here on the building. I've completed it all the way to the top of the tower where the, re where the uh, replicator will go. So the bottom giant section, the base, is where the industrial forge, other forges, and the weapons shops will go. And then I have a small little lighthouse uh, house on the top there, which will be probably a lookout, a lookout room and a map table room. Aw, oh, Rex is coming close to my fence. And there it goes. Aw, oh, that's too bad. So um, the middle part is called the spindle and there are one, two, three, four levels and these are fairly good sized rooms in which I can have specialized rooms for specific types of crafting stations. And then the top will be where the replicator is which will look like a gigantic searchlight. The next thing that I really need to work on in essence uh, for the lighthouse will be getting those items, getting the tech replicator, getting the tech generator, so that I have power and in order to do that I need to go farming element. 
The only place that I know of that's available to me at my current play level for Element is called the Crystal Isles and on the Crystal Isles map and it's um, called the Dark Isles or Dark Mistlands or something along those lines and it's this very very dark frightening place with floating bubbles of water that will suck you in and kill you with swarms of Tarana as well as a broodmother boss hanging around and zombie wyverns so it's particularly dangerous and um, tons of, of really aggressive animals most specifically Carnos and um, Carnos, eagles, and raptors are wandering around everywhere. You constantly have to defend yourself. That Rex died so quickly, it must have been the low-level one. Uh, so back to where we were looking at with the lighthouse. The last thing that I really have to work on is finishing the roof and then basically customizing the metal. I do not intend to keep it a metal grid like that. Um, I have painted the sections that I want painted. The next part of it will be to set the model and the transparency textures for the rest of the building once we get the roof done. I was going for a dome like a, a dome at the top. It's very difficult to work with. There's been a bug that's messed up some of the building pieces so that they don't snap correctly and they don't align correctly with each other. It's going to be a little bit of an experiment to figure out how to get this to work. Not to mention it's somewhat difficult to work on when you're up here floating around on an animal, but the snow owl that I'm riding right now is absolutely perfect for it. It uh, basically is just, it hovers in place and I can move it very precisely into alignment with something that I'm trying to work on. So this is where we will start out. I think before we get started on the lighthouse, I'd like to go ahead and work on my breeding just a bit. There were a couple of eggs I'd like to hatch, and I'd like to show how that works. And the other thing I'd like to do is get a Giga sighting and find out how close it's come to my base. We're going to head downstairs. Oh no, actually we're going to look in our nest right here. I keep it powered with re-fertilizer currently because I don't have a tech generator. And I have a moss chops egg which will go towards my herd collection and a dimorphodon egg which is a breeding animal. So we're going to put the moss chops egg away for now. My moss chops eggs are lasting for over 199 weeks. That's quite a dramatic amount of time, so there's no rush to hatch them. I have a new system now that will automatically pick up any live births. So if I drop an egg of this dimorphodon baby and it hatches, the soul terminal, which is from the dino storage mod, will automatically collect the baby, which is what just happened. My soul terminals are downstairs. At the the soul terminal it's collecting is downstairs and it's right here in the middle radiating this little globe here this is a newborn track active and it rec basically requires that you fill it up with empty soul traps that can house the babies this is the baby that was just born i have a note here that tells me what best level i'm looking for i don't you only get a certain number of times that you can that you can breed an animal. I don't know how many times it is. It's something like 20, 25 times that you can breed an animal line. So you want to make sure that you don't waste your breeding times. So what I do is I figure out what the best required animal would be for each pairing. And I actually literally either kill or dispose of in some other way, any of the babies that are first born from the match that don't exactly match what I'm looking for. So the best possible current Dimorphodon that could be born would be a level 333, according to my note. I can quickly refer to this note and know that of the four animals that I'm breeding, this is what I'm looking for. So I look at this Dimorphodon information that's trapped in its soul ball by the soul trap, and it says that this Dimorphodon is level 317. 
This lets me know that this will not be bred into the line. And it's also a disposable dimorphodon. So if I had the meat available to afford to raise this baby, I would raise it and I would use it towards my guardian flock that I'm building outside to help guard against any animals that would break into my base. Currently, I don't have that, so he's going to go into storage for a free-for-all storage. These are my free-for-all animals. Anybody that's in my tribe could come and collect one of these animals and raise it for their very own. Our raptors, Tweedledee and Tweedledun, are doing really well. They're 80% maturation. And that's really all there is to the breeding program. This will capture live births, so these megaloceruses here, this lady is gestating right now, so Sienna is going to drop a baby in a little while, about 30 minutes. When her baby drops, instead of me needing to babysit her and be here to collect that baby right away, the baby will be picked up by the soul trap terminal and stored for me until I decide how I want to dispose of it. And most of the time, dispose is actually what happens. In the respect of egg layers such as these pteranodons, ruby and spearmint, they lay an egg and the egg gets picked up by my hatching nest upstairs. The hatching nest will actually incubate that egg at the correct temperature down to 1% so that it will hatch almost immediately after I drop it, which is what you saw happen with the dimorphodon baby. If you'll excuse me for just a second, I need to take a drink of water. As you can see, my voice is going hoarse and I'm not quite sure why. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Thank you, and I'm sorry for that interruption. So that pretty much catches us up with everything that's been going on on my base for the last week or so, except for the lighthouse. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go very quickly for a, a very swift search. There is a giga that spawned in the area, and I want to make sure that it's di distanced itself from my base and not really close by. And when we get back, we'll shut off this dome that's just showing the feeding range of my feeding troughs as we don't really need it. The reason why I turned it on was I wanted to make sure that my lighthouse was not too tall. Um, the feeding range for my, do for, for my, for my feeding trough is uh, bigger than what the range would be for pulling materials from the top of this lighthouse. I wanted to make sure that my replicator crafting station would be able to automatically pull materials from anything that's stored in one of the buildings nearby or from the basement level of my building. So the last time I saw the Giga, he was over here in this direction on the side of Blue Sky Peak. You know, I keep just messing up the name of that mountain and I cannot remember whether it's Blue Sky Peak or whether it's White Sky Peak. So when we get over it, I'm going to check it out and uh, double check what its name is. The last time I saw him, he was on the mountainside, and he was falling into this forest just down below. There he is, right there. You can just see his tail poking out from the rock. So he's actually somewhat stuck and hasn't moved. And this is White Sky Peak. Let's try to remember that, shall we? So he's not really come too close to my base, but it is very typical for uh, a Giga to make its way all the way to my base. And when he does, unfortunately, he will aggro on my animals. Um, so I want to keep an eye on where he is and verify if he's getting closer, I'll pack my animals inside. As a matter of fact, most likely when we're done with the stream, I will pack them inside before I log out today. I already have the parts that I need loaded onto my inventory. You can see them on my toolbar. 
So really, I just need to park and get working, except of course I won't be using the eagle to do this work. Oh, that's too bad. The T-Rex is taking care of those stegosauruses. They've been there with me for hours. Actually, for a day. Ever since the dino wipe this morning. We must be lagging out pretty badly. There we go. I will do one of Rebel Weasel's patented three-point turns. And let's shut off the feeding trough range. So this is going to be a very, very quiet stream. Not much is going to be going on. We're just going to be working on that base, on my main base location. As delicate and fragile as this particular little poofy owl looks, it does have 10,000 health, so if that eagle comes over here, I'll be able to handle myself. Except I didn't want to land there. There we go. So it looks like the Rex triumphed over this Pegasaurus. Let's have a look. Yeah. Oh, it's only a level 35, so it was the 196 that died on the fence. I feel sad for the Stegos, but such is the nature of life. Wild in nature, tooth and claw. So, one of the problems that I ran into here is I wanted to make this just a straight sloped pointy thing, but I found out that these sloped roofs will not actually snap to themselves. They will only snap to the wall below them. So we won't be able to go straight like that. The triangle pieces will snap directly to it. And, but unfortunately, going straight into triangles at this point, um, we would want to go with some flat pieces. So what I thought that I would try to do is I thought I would try using flat pieces instead of angled pieces in the correct size, I mean in the correct um, shape that we actually do need in those places and then try to connect more sloped walls. But as you can see, these sloped roofs still will not point upwards. At this point, I'm trying to decide if a ramp will work. I have a superstitious dread that checking up on that Giga is drawing its attention to myself and that it's going to follow me to my base. <laughs> I don't think the AI is quite that intelligent, but it still scares me. That Giga could destroy my entire base, including this lighthouse tower. We should have some flat triangle pieces in my inventory. Yes, I do. Good. Now let's see 
Uh, at this point, we could go entirely with triangles because if you look at the floor plan below, this is the area where it goes straight into triangles as well. So theoretically speaking, I should be able to attach triangles in the, uh, angled triangles in a slope like this and have them actually work. that's not the one I wanted to use. And that didn't work out. Let's see if I can get it at this angle. Apparently I can. Good. I wonder if that one will work. I don't trust it. I try to frame these corner pieces if they're not working out right by having them surrounded by ones on other sides. So see, this one right here is the one that keeps messing up is when you're adding the first one on the corner. So what I do is I go to the next one and get it placed where it's not being influenced by any other piece. Uh huh, it didn't work anyway. <laughs> that shows me. Let's try again. You notice that I'm allowing for a long pause. Whoops, it's just going to keep doing that. Okay. <gasps> Whoops. All right, well, luckily I have some extras with me. Only a couple. Oh, come on! I know if I try to pick that up, I'm going to take something else down by accident, too. This sucks. Okay. Uh, let's see, that was... Uh... Oh, here comes the Rex. I need to pick up that triangle piece in the corner there. That one. That's what's misaligning everything. And now see, it'll probably work. Yep. And now if I put the triangle piece, the flat triangle back, it's fine. It's the triangle pieces that mess up alignment for some reason. And there's the Rex. And dead. I think I'll try to harvest it.
we could use the meat pretty heavily. There we go. <laughs> we didn't get that much meat, but we could still use it. We need every bit of meat we can get, so. That's simply because I haven't gone hunting yet. I think what I'll do later on down the line is take an entire flock of uh, saber tooth tigers and just go eat everything that's on the island, including the trikes, the stegos, and the bronos. There we go. All right. So, as I said, very quiet day. We're just going to be working on the lighthouse roof and uh, working on the lighthouse models and textures. It's going to be very calm, very peaceful, except for a Rex attacking our fence. <laughs> Our nice fancy snow owl, which was a wonderful gift. I'm very grateful for the people that I've met so far on this new server that I started playing on. They're just helpful and kind and relaxed and uh, at the same time they haven't lost their sense of fun. I'm hoping to regain a sense of fun myself. All right. See if we have any further luck by controlling the angle on this a little bit. Here we go. Let's try for this one. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. It's Vegas. Give me a winning placement. Yes! Okay. We'll try working on this section. Oh, we run out of slip triangle pieces. Um, Let's see if I can calculate how many we need. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then it would be uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. So probably nineteen, if I have it right. This is a remote control gun that'll open the door for me. There we go. So we'll go ahead and make around even 20 of those sloped triangles. If I have one or two extra, I don't mind too much. I do have to be careful um, because I'm running low on resources, but I like to have extra of the odd pieces like these uh, sloped the triangle roofs because I never know where they're going to fit and where they're not. So if my count's correct, I should only need 19 of these. There we go. Let's scroll down and find them. I think it's safe to say that we're done with the sloped roofs, except I was going to experiment a little bit on my side house. You know, the one thing I didn't do was give you a walkthrough of the, of the lighthouse. Oops, I forgot my gun. I don't see anything that's going to come attack my eagle. I'll leave it outside here. Or my... So this is the front entrance. And then this is the back entrance where I will set up a docking system. We can pull rafts up 
So if someone goes collecting resources using a raft in Dinos, they can bring it up here and transfer them directly into storage. Because the grass comes through the foundation, I decided to make a double back, a double bottom. And instead of stacking foundations, even though the walls are 5,000 health less, I decided to go ahead and make a sub-basement, which might be useful for putting um, dedicated storage boxes. This first floor is where the industrial forge will go. And because the industrial forge is six levels high, we have made a ring so that the industrial forge can sit through the center. Around the outside edges of this ring will be armor and weapon storage, ammo storage, weapon and armor workshop with crafting stations for making weapons and armor, upgrading weapons and armor, and also storage with dedicated storage. But up until we can get dedicated storage, it will be vaults, many vaults, more storage. And then we come to our stair house. So the stair house roof is flat and I'm thinking of giving it a peaked roof, but it won't be able to be more than sloped in one direction. And I'm not sure how it'll work with this triangle piece kind of orphaned on the end here as a tail. In the front of the lighthouse, we have the actual little house. This is just a simple tiny room, uh, three by two. And we have glass windows so that you can look out and also snipe through them. Um, one of the things that happens is that if you want to look at something through glass or through a window, let's see if we can find an animal. The information will not show up. Oh, it does through the glass. Okay, well normally, normally, <laughs> normal glasses don't give you the information you're looking for. I'm not seeing what, level 70, okay. But you notice that when I open the window, now I actually see the big tile card that's showing up on the left is because it's a special new kind of, of spyglass from a mod. But obviously you can't shoot bullets through, through, through walls, so this is basically a sniping tower and a watchtower. I'm thinking of putting map tables in here, maps of the map, uh, canvas maps. Oh, something I forgot to tell you, show you was the lookout tower downstairs. We'll grab it on the way back. So this is, these are the stairwell rooms. Each room has a good amount of space in it that I can do for specialized crafting. Like one of these floors will be for Echo RP mod crafting tables all by itself. And one of these rooms will also be for bunk beds. Finally, you bake through to the top, and this is where the replicator will be housed. And this is the roof that we're working on. So that's the tour of the features of the lighthouse. This will be a shared crafting hall and guild hall, or tribe hall, for everybody in the tribe. With pretty much everything that they need. Free-for-all armor, free-for-all weapons. These are my part- this is my parts box, and... Nope, I don't. One of the things I wanted to get was glass triangles, so let's make those before we get started. And finally, we have a lookout outpost, a sniping outpost here, which will be ideal for a couple of X plants and the ability to stand here and snipe all the way across the river. Let's go make those glass triangle pieces. The final interior part of the of the uh, roof, I wanted to be glass. Let's see. It appears that I do not have them trained. Uh, 
Oh, uh, let's go for roof. No, let's go for glass. And we want this S plus glass triangle roof. Just looking through what else we have here. Let's go with uh, eight. What are those? Datons. And a very angry Doty. <laughs> I'm going to land inside here and put some of these parts down. There's no reason to weigh myself down with parts I won't be using. I gave myself a bed up here temporarily so that once in a while when I have to go AFK, like go run some laundry, something like that, um, I can lay down and not get kicked from the server until I get back. Let's see, we shouldn't need that. Shouldn't need that. Shouldn't need these. We just need the slope triangle pieces and we should be done. Oops. I need to go upstairs. And I just realized I switched my tribe privacy my tribe settings a while back. Uh yeah, we need to fix that. There we go. I set it to public when I do doors so that everyone in the tribe can use the doors and when I place the crafting stations down here they'll be placed publicly so that anybody in the tribe can use them. But if someone were to build their own building as part of this village that I want to build here and wanted their crafting stations to be left alone, they will be. They will be personally owned. Alright, won't be too long now before I won't be able to get back up and down through that hole in the ceiling. Hopefully. Okay, let's see if we can get these to snap correctly. Good, good so far. Come on, work with me. <gasps> Damn, and it was the wrong piece anyway. Let's see, we'll try it at a little angle here. Let's try locking it in place with the middle one. Okay, come on, Mama. Snap it. Snap it good. Oh, I used the wrong piece. Oh, no. Okay, let's try for the same angle and 
Toolbar number three. Okay. Come on. Come on. Nice and stable. Nice and stable. Yes! We got it. Okay, cool. It gets harder the more it gets filled in, folks. Each piece influences the one next to it. All right, here we go. Okay, that's the wrong piece. I'm pretty sure that looks like the glass triangle. That's the one we want, the metal. <laughs> that was a close call. Okay, all right, we're going to pause, pause, and click. Yes. This is <laughs> horrifying. Okay, next. Let's see if we can get the upside down one here. I think we want there we go the camera to look upwards all right pause pause deep breath in breathing out squeeze the mouse did it all right excellent excellent one more just a couple more to go three more to go plus the top but three more to go here we go we could do this Okay, breathe in, breathe out, squeeze. Oh, that one didn't go. Okie dokie. All right, here we go. We could do this. We could do this. Deep breath. Wait, wait, squeeze. Ah! Let's try doing it from this angle. And that's the wrong piece. I'm catching it now because I can tell the difference looking at them. All right. Oh, that one went really weird. All right, we're going to leave that and hope that maybe it stops the next one from going that direction. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can get them here. Try for that one. And for that one. Good. Let's go ahead and pick up this one here on the corner and see if it's interfering. Okay, here we go. It just really doesn't want to go in that spot. Okay. <laughs> My hands are sweating. <laughs> this is so hard to get these to go where you want them to go. Oh, shit. Okay. Let's try again. Ugh. Okay, we're going to try to pull this triangle ceiling piece. It could be the factor that's causing this problem. Yep. There we go. Let's go ahead and place the next one before we put the triangle ceiling piece back in. Uh-huh. We're going to try to lock this last one in place by doing the one in between first. Um, 
Last one on this tier. Okay, here it goes. Yes, we did it. Now let's turn around and place that ceiling piece. Excellent, excellent. We're on our last tier and these are the pieces that I wanted to be glass. And you see, this is the problem. This new bug has them floating really high above where they're supposed to go. We'll go ahead and put them in in case the bug fix actually puts them where they're supposed to be. Yeah, one more left. That should be all of them. Okay. So we'll wait and see how that goes when they fix the bug. If it uh, fixes them just naturally, then they're already placed. If it doesn't, then we'll pick them up and place them again. And that is the roof of the lighthouse. I can't believe we finished it. We finished it. Yay! I'm so excited. I just want to work on touching up that roof down there, and then we're going to work on models and textures. I think I'll put the owl away. We're done with the hard part for now. We'll use him again a little bit later. So you remember that Sienna, the elk downstairs, was going to have her baby soon. We can go and check and see how that baby turned out. And Tweedledee and Tweedledun are still growing up. Okay, so there's her baby. And what we want is for the Megaloceros, best possible is 324. And, oh, this one's only a 320. So this is a disposable Megaloceros, which will become a home guard, part of the home guard. Okay, so next we head back to the, to the lighthouse. And it's time to work on models and textures. We have to go all the way up to the top to get the things that I need to work on them. Well, not to the top, to the first stair room. Oh, but we were going to work on, we were going to work on that roof. Let's, um, let's have a look at that real quick. So we would be looking at a sloped triangle roof there, uh, a sloped, uh, a sloped uh, wall there, and let's go ahead and pick up the ceiling pieces for now. Just really don't know how that's going to work. Um, we would need more walls. I believe we need exactly three. Yes, perfect. Really not sure how this is gonna work, okay. That's what we would want, and let's just Uh, 
How would this possibly work geometrically? I guess it would work geometrically. Let's go get some sloped walls. See if there are any in here. No, we'll have to craft them. We'll go ahead and grab our paint and we'll grab our transparency gun. I'll wait on that. Okay, so a set of sloped walls. Kind of lost track of where I was going there. All right, so let's see. We want this one. Um, where did did that go on top of the roof? It did. Let's see if we can snag it. We'll go ahead and pick up the roofing. There we go. And we want that one to go there. It worked. Well, okay then. Let's go ahead and paint them. I like it. That's so much better than the flat roof. The flat roof was boring. We have a gap here because I didn't get this end piece on correctly. Do I want to rebuild it? Does it bother me that much? Yes. That's better. That wasn't so hard to fix. 
My old depressed self would have left it alone and said, Oh, why bother? Oh, it's not worth it. My old low self-esteem would have said, Oh, I'm not good enough, so it doesn't matter if other people see that I can't do anything good. My new self-esteem says, This does not match my sense of value on building a building, and I don't want to have a gap in a building that I created. So, progress for everybody. All right, um, we'll keep our painting gun with us just in case we need it. Let's go ahead and take our model gun anyway, again, just in case we need it. And I'm gonna go ahead and load everything back up on my toolbar where it belongs. We're gonna work with transparencies first and then models. The models are the most difficult. So with transparency, you can, you can control how opaque you want the glass. And by opaque, I mean how easily you can see through it. Currently, as you can see, we could see, we could see through it by looking out, and we can see through it by looking in. This is 0% opaque, and it, or technically 100% transparent. Opaque is like the opposite of transparent. So the settings that we have are, we could make it 100% opaque. That means that we can't see out. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I got caught in that door. And they can't see in. Now, what's the point of having glass walls if you can't see out of them? That's my viewpoint on this. So what if we went one way in to out? That means that we can see out, but other people can't see it. Now that's, that's viable. We could go with that. But we can see out completely. What if we wanted to have a tent so that when we look out, we see a little bit of the glass? Let's go for 50% tinting. Now we can see out, but the glass is darkened slightly. Other people still cannot see in at all. So what we have to decide is, do I want people to see in? And I think the answer is probably no. Is 50% enough? I think I'd like to go a little darker. So let's try 75. I want to see, but I want to know that there's a window. And of course, again, no one could see in, but we can see out. Let's try 60. That's a little darker than I wanted. 60%. Perfect. I'm going to go with 60. So what do I need to do next? Do I have to go through all of this typing in 0 0.60 for every window? No, I do not. Right click on the thing and it saves the settings in my gun. Left click on the next window and bam, 60% transparency. Other people cannot see in through, but we can see out up to 60% transparency. So now we get the tedious chore of clicking on every single window pane in this entire building. This is what I suggest. Do a section and then step outside again. Oops. <laughs> and verify that that's really what you want.
Is that really what I want for this building? Yes. Okay. Apparently I haven't saved the settings again when I put the gun away. I do believe that the transparency settings do not work on doors. Oh, they do work on doors. Well, that's perfect. I like keeping my doors private. Hi, Anne. How are you doing? Today is a really boring stream. I'm just working on my lighthouse. Oops, so apparently this door is backwards. I'll have to fix that. Um, there we go. Not sure I got all of them. Okay, that should be good. And now for the second floor. We did the entrance way. So you just finished a 30 minute shift that took an hour. So you're doing work for TurboTax, is that right? It's a temporary thing because of the tax season, probably. Now that we've done the second floor, let's go outside just one more time and double check. Is this what I want my building to look like? Yes, this is exactly the look I was going for. Okay. So you said the call took almost an hour to place an order because of the error in the system. Oh, oh yeah. I go through that a lot when I speak with people from, you know, that are working with remote systems and they're like logged in. They do things like, you know, they get really upset and worried and I'm always really careful to let, oops, so this one's backwards. Um, I'm really careful to let people know that, you know, I totally understand they're not in control of the computer system that they work with and stuff. They're just, they're just customer help representatives. They don't run the computer system. Actually, running the computer system is something that used to be my dream job.
Yeah, yeah, that was um, one-way transparency. And I didn't really want it because it's going in between two sections of the building itself, not blocking strangers from looking in. Yep, see that is going the wrong direction. The doors are going the wrong direction. So I have to manually fix it to switch it one way out to in. So when somebody is outside, they actually can't see. There, I just artificially raised the lighting for us. They can't see in, but we could see out. That's the idea. Okie dokie, just a couple more here on this level. And that should be it for that level. So now we're working on the next level up. And this is the stairhouse. All the doors are backwards. And now we do this floor. Pretty easy going with this tool. It makes everything really easy. I don't have to go through the menu system for every one. This is why I like Structures Plus. is because Orion Sun thought of all these things to make life easier. Did that work? I can't tell. Make sure we got the one under the stairs. Yep. See, that section, this section. So you're updating Satisfactory. How are you doing in Satisfactory? Getting close to the top. A space teleporter. Is there actually other planets that you can go to in the game? A 
Okay, so we're now in the lighthouse, in the in the actual light portion of the lighthouse. And at this point, I do not want to make these windows opaque because I want the light to shine through and I want people to see what's going on. So we're going to be leaving this alone, um, not even tinting it a little bit. And now it's time to work on our models. We'll start again from the bottom up. So this is the amount of control you have over the Structures Plus models. Wrong gun. This is the model gun. And with the model gun, we can change how many sides are showing on a glass wall. I can have it have no sides. I can have it had one side, and depending on whether I choose A, B, C, or D, I can decide which side has the, has the middle. I could do only three sides, or I could do a corner. We're going to go with no sides for this particular, uh, for this particular row. And we're going to save the model index and click the ones above it. And we get a clean, polished, smooth look. If we head outside, all they see is the opaque glass. So we're going to go with no sides, not through the entire lighthouse. This one right here, I would like to show the side on the left hand side. So I'm going to clear the index and click it again. And I want to show one side, probably side B. Nope, that's the bottom. Um, C is the right, D is the left. So now we're only showing the line where the two walls connect. Why do I make the doors not see-through? Well, I don't make the doors see-through because I don't want people to look inside my building and see what I own. There are people who will try to break into your building and steal things, or sneak into your building and steal things in this game. Usually that's only on a PvP server. This is a PvE server, so it's actually impossible to steal things from people. But once in a while you get a modded feature that doesn't lock. A table or a storage chest or something along those lines that does not have locking ability or you want to leave things unlocked for guests that have the pin code to your door you can pin code lock your door as a matter of fact I'll work on that now and everybody in the world knows what my pin code is for my door <laughs> Anyway, the point is, is that this way only people who are not in my tribe who have the pin code can come in and help themselves to storage. One, two, three, four, five. That's right. The perfect pin code. So going back to our modeling. I have the model saved for no walls on this floor. I'm going to go ahead and go up to the next floor and make sure that that row is done. And then up to the next floor. And that doesn't really apply here. Okay. I guess we'll just do floor by floor. So one's where I want the only the left side to show. Let's train it. This one right here. Whoops. Uh, was D.
and this one here and this one here these I only want the left side to show and you know I'm going to do this side differently on this side I don't want any sides to show anywhere in the round part of it just where it connects to the doorway Now we're going to do the ones where we only want the white, the right side to show. Which is C, C. So let's see this one. That's all of them. Now we're going to do the ones where I want no sides to show. On this side of the lighthouse, I'm leaving the brackets in between everything. But on this side, whoops. I want no sides to show. So now what we're going to do is we're going to compare the two sides. Do I like it better where the lines show whenever it changed, the windows change direction on the hexagon. Or do I like it better when there are no seams at all on the round part of the lighthouse? I like it better when there are no seams showing on the part of the lighthouse. Does anybody else have an opinion? If you do, let me know. I'm going to go ahead and work on eliminating the sides on the left side. That one I actually wanted. I'll leave that. That one I wanted to leave as well. That was D. Let's fix this one I messed up over here. And that's everything for this floor. Now I just need to follow that same pattern.
So I'm going to work on ones that want to keep the right side. So that would be this one and this one. This one and this one. And those. Now I have to decide which corners I want to keep on this side. I'd like to keep some of them, but not all of them. Let's see how many corners we have. We have one. Here, we'll mark one. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 12 corners. What if I did, let's see, every three. So that would be one, two, one, two, Three, one, two, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Okay, let me double check my counting. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three. That one's not supposed to be done. One, two, three, that one's not supposed to be done. One, one, two, three, one, Two, three, one. Oh, something's not quite right. Maybe it's every four. 
<laughs> oh gosh. Let's try this again. Let's set them all back to normal. Okay. Let's try every four with side C done, saved. Okay. That's one, two, three, four. One, oh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That didn't work out. You know what, when I was doing it the other way, I was doing every three instead of every four. That's what the problem is. Let's fix these again. Okay. So that's one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Three. One, two, three. One. Perfect. Okay. Okay, the one that's next to it, we want to have on side C. So we clear the gun by right clicking at the floor, left click at the next and do one side C, no, one side D, yes. Right click it to set the index model and go to town. That should be everything. So next, everything in between is going to be set to no windows, to, to no frames. So right click at the ground to clear my model index, tell it no sides and done. Right click again to set the model index and just left click away.
Can you imagine without having this gun trying to set up temporary ramps to get up to those top ones to change their settings? Whoops. And now we have our lighthouse set up. We'll go grab a bird and we'll fly and check it all out. We need to do this center part here. And it's gonna be completely without any framing at all. Except these guys. We will leave with two sides because they match the door. That one doesn't appear to have its transparency setting. I'm fighting with a collision system with these stairs that's blocking me from hitting some of these walls. Yeah, that one missed its transparency setting as well. to get that one from outside. Okay, aside from a couple of troubleshooting things we need to deal with, that should be everything. We could fix the transparency on that one, I think. Maybe. There we go. Let's try that with the model setting. Let's see, that's five. Oh, it worked, okay. And transparency setting, there. There we go. We have a couple gaps. 
There's really not much I can do about that. There's not and have the rest of the building look good too, unfortunately. Now let's see, for these guys, um, go like that. That looks cleaned up and nicer. It looks like it's open, actually, even though it isn't. Let's see. I want... Um, that one. We want no sides for this one. And one side on the left for that one. That looks pretty good. So now we're back where we were down here. Oh, I thought I'd done all this. Let's see. So one side, right side is what we want. Right side, good. Right side, good. Right side, good. Check this floor. Right side. Right side. Right side. Right side. Right side. Right side. I got distracted when I hit the stairway, that's what happened. Okay. Now going back down, we're looking at clear. So, that one. Whoops.
Oh. Got too dark. And finally, we have left side. Whoops. So all the ones that we want to keep the left side on. And yet we have a couple of special cases. This one we want two sides, A, to match the doorway. This one we want two sides, A, to match the doorway. And this one. This should be everything. Let's go grab a bird and do a sweep around and have a look at how it looks. Or have a peek at how it looks or something along those lines. <laughs> Let's see how our raptors are growing. Tweedledum is a grown up. And Tweedledee has only 0.8% to go. And they'll be ready to go to another map. And all of our meat is cooked. I think it's safe to say that we can put the spray painter away, but we'll wait and double check. And it's just in time for the sun to come up. You know what? Hold on, hold on. I'm going to go get a different bird. The owl will be much better. Because we can hover and look. The eagle likes to stick his head in the way. And his flappy wings are huge. Are we ready? Here we go. And there is my lighthouse. Oh, it's so beautiful. Let's take a screenshot, shall we? That's what I was looking for. It turned out almost perfect. 
Let's double check and make sure. Oh, we're missing one transparency next to the first staircase. Whoops. Come on, guy. Land where I want you to land. There we go. Let's see, number four. And we're going to just copy and then apply. There we go. We'll get a view from the front here. Too close. It looks wonderful. I'm so pleased. It worked out exactly how I was hoping it would. This was a lot of hard work, so much hard work. This took me about two weeks to design, to figure out how it would work and how it would look, testing different models, testing different textures. It's wonderful. And now we can move into it. It's going to be terrific. So my next building project is going to be what I call a utility tower. It'll go right next to the taming pen right there, in between those two trees. A utility tower is basically a very tiny hexagonal, just six triangles around tower, about the size of that lookout tower over there on the right hand side, that basically will house my power generator, my feeding troughs, um, Possibly farmers, maybe, most likely not. I'll probably keep the farmers with the garden itself. Um, possibly a nanny. Um, the nanny, no, not the nanny, the animal tender is the uh, creature that will automatically collect resources from things like the snails, which drop acatina paste, which substitutes for cementing paste. This has turned into a really long, long run on since. <laughs> Oh, oh, I have to stretch. I have to just like have this really big stretch. Mmm. That feels so good to have that building done. So going back to my utility tower. The utility tower will also have some turrets to shoot eagles out of the sky and anything that gets a little too ornery and starts to come after me. Um, the cool thing about the the uh, turrets that you can use is that you can set them up specifically. I gotta adjust myself in my chair. I scooted down so far with my stretch. <laughs> oh, stretch all the way to your fingers. Oh, stretch your back straight, super straight. Lift your neck up like there's a balloon attached to it, pulling up your spine. Inhale and exhale. That was very tense work. Very tense for me. I'm not sure why. So, and you know, it doesn't matter. It was, and I recognized it, and I stretched, and that's what's really important. So the utility tower will have turrets, and that will be the next thing, and it will honestly really take only a little short part. Let's go ahead and have a look at our journal and see how we're progressing on our goals. So just 
Looking at our overall island goals, we've completed our temporary construction house and we've created an auto resource garden. We have some of our utility, utility, utility animals. I have a Bronto for collecting thatch. I have a Stiggy for collecting stone, metal, rock, and flint. The thing that I don't have is I do not have the Dodicarus, which is the little round ball animal. Those are for collecting stone only. I don't really need it too heavily because I'm getting enough stone as it is from um, from my Ankylo and from my Stig Stiggies. The problem is is that um, eventually I want to have an area where my Dodi Dodecarus can be let loose and auto harvest stone on its own. So setting that up is actually a priority, but I haven't been searching for a Dodecarus. The same with the Therizinos. Therizinos we need for multiple reasons. We need an entire herd of Therizinos in order to create um, exceptional eggs. Exceptional eggs is the next tier in kibble eggs. And so we need a herd of them, but also they are one of the best utility animals and combat animals you can get. And Therizinos will be eventually over time one of my breed more advanced breeding target animals that I want to work on breeding. Set up egg layers for each egg type. We have extra small eggs for Dodos. We have small eggs with Oviraptors, but we need to tame Pagomastix. We really only need a matched set of a mating pair of Pagomastixes of any level, but we could also spend a little bit of time searching for high level Pagomastixes to tame because they actually do make somewhat decent shoulder pets. However, it's not really a high priority for me. I stick to birds as my shoulder pets, so that's a really long way down the line. But we can keep an eye out just in case. Medium eggs we're getting from the Carbonemus, which is the giant turtles. Um, large eggs we're getting from the moss chops. And what we're looking for now, and I haven't written them down, that's strange, is we still need to get the... Um, Uh, extra large eggs, which is extraordinary kibble. No, it's uh, excellent kibble or something like that. Um, and those we want Therizinos for. And we need special eggs. And those are really so far beyond this that's very advanced play to get the special eggs so i'll be hanging holding off on that as far as building our base goes uh our base building we have completed the lighthouse next will be the utility tower and after that will be the water wheel we want to collect every cave and artifact. We haven't even gotten to that point yet. Defeat the three bosses. Do all ascension levels of the tech cave. Collect all the notes. Collect all the animal dossiers. Tame all the animals in the dossiers. Those are our goals for the island. We're doing actually fairly well. We're about a third of the way through. The hardest part, of course, will be every cave and artifact and the three bosses defeated. So that's where I'm at in my goals. Tame priorities are pretty much need to be revamped. And so for to do, utility tower. Oh, I already have that written down. And we're going to change the priority on that. Taming our combat and breeding animals will come after we get Pagomastixes and Therizinos. So that's what we can look forward to in our next few streams, is we'll be working on building the utility tower. We'll take a break from being too chill and go out and get some more tamed taming done by looking for Pagomastix and Therizinosauruses. And we will also work on taming our combat and utility breeding animals which are 
Dicarus. Sabertooth, Terror Bird. Um, what else do we want to work on for utility? There was something else. Oh, there's Enos. Um, Brontos. And Stiggies. And Mammoths. I can't type that for some reason. <laughs> My goodness. Stiggio Mitches. There we go. So those are our to-do lists and what we can look forward to on our next few streams. I'm going to go ahead and end for this note. Thank you very much for joining me here on Curiosity Gameplay with Rebel Weasel. Goodbye.